Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dave Paradise of Dollar Bank and chair for the Chesapeake Division of the Hampton Roads Chamber. We work to be an impactful advocate, inspiring igniter, powerful economic partner, and regional collaborator. The Hampton Roads Chamber means business. We are continuing to expand our membership in Chesapeake and all of the 757. On behalf of the Chesapeake Division, I welcome you to the 2021 State of the City Address. And now I call upon our Hampton Roads Chamber President and CEO, Brian Stevens, to continue with today's program. Well, thank you very much, Dave. We appreciate it. I appreciate your leadership this year as the chairman of the Chesapeake Division of the Hampton Roads Chamber. We appreciate all that you're doing to lead that division to even greater heights this year. So thank you very much, David. Uh, as David said, my name is Brian Stevens, and it is a distinct honor for me to serve this region as the president and CEO of the Hampton Roads Chamber, the chamber that's unapologetically pro-business, and we're unapologetic about our mission. And that mission is to set conditions throughout Hampton Roads so that businesses can be a success. And we uh, strive every single day to do that for you, the business owners and the, the businessmen and women here in, uh, in Hampton Roads. I want to recognize a couple of people we have in the room, as well as all of you who are, are viewing us today. Uh, first of all, Mayor Bobby Dyer is with us. Uh, Mayor Dyer from Virginia Beach, thank you, Mayor, for being here and supporting Chesapeake. I also would be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, the chairman of the board for the Hampton Roads uh, Regional uh, Chamber, uh, Mr. Stephen Romine is with us. Stephen, thank you very much for being here as well. I also want to take this opportunity, as, as those of you who have seen these State of the Cities before, usually I, uh, I, I make an effort to recognize all of our elected officials, and there's a reason that I do that, because I want to thank them for their dedicated service and their commitment to their constituents, their commitment to their municipality, their commitment to their uh, th this region. Uh, I can't do that today, obviously, but I know we have a lot of elected leaders who are viewing today. So uh, for those of you that are watching this, thank you so much for your service, and I ask your continued support of the business community of Hampton Roads. So when you look at legislation, please consider the impact that that legislation has on our business community because we're all about ensuring that we have a thriving business community and a thriving business community means jobs and that's what we're all about. You know, we couldn't do these events without the strong and generous support of our sponsors. So I want to take a few minutes to recognize uh, our sponsors. First of all, I want to recognize all of our strategic sponsors who, uh, who support the chamber year round. I specifically today want to thank Town Bank for again being our presenting sponsor for the State of the City Series 757. Special thanks to uh, David Hare who is with us from the Town Bank team and you'll hear from him here in a couple of minutes. I want to thank Chesapeake uh, City host sponsor, Chesapeake Regional Healthcare. Thanks to uh, its CEO, Reese uh, Jackson, and again you'll hear from him in a couple of minutes as well. Our Chesapeake member spotlight sponsor is Dollar Tree. I want to thank Bob Sasser and Chris Williams. You'll hear from Chris here in a little bit as well. I want to thank all of our Platinum Series sponsors, Bon Secours, Hampton Roads. Special thanks to Amy Carrier for her strong leadership within that organization and within the region. I want to thank Dominion Energy Virginia uh, and its leader, uh, Ed Bain. I want to thank the, our Building the Future sponsor, the Franklin Johnston Group, special thanks to uh, Taylor Franklin and his team for all that they do to support the business community here in Hampton Roads. Our host sponsor is the Chesapeake uh, Conference Center. I was just talking to the leader of this uh, organization, Donna uh, Canatella, uh, and about how we look forward to doing this again next year when we have six or 700 people in this room. So Donna, thank you so much for your flexibility and support of the chamber and the business community. Thank you to our Silver uh, Series sponsors, a, B, and B, Geico, Hampton Roads Workforce Council, Norfolk State University, Optima Health, and Verizon. Also want to thank our bronze sponsors, Dollar Bank, Langley Federal Credit Union, and Nextera Energy. 
Our audiovisual sponsor is an outstanding uh, AV organization, Elite Audiovisual Elements. Special thanks to uh, Ray and Tiffany in the back for making us look so good and keeping us on track. Uh, you will also find uh, virtual and program sponsors listed uh, in your programs. For those of you in the room, obviously it's in your hard copy program. For those of you that are online, that program was sent to you digitally uh, a couple of days ago. So please join me in thanking all of our generous sponsors. And now it's my uh, distinct honor uh, to introduce the city host uh, sponsor, Reese Jackson from Chesapeake Regional Healthcare to make a few comments. Reese. All right, thank you. Well, good afternoon. And um, just want to express my appreciation to Mayor West, other members of city council that may be watching and all the community leaders that are gathered here uh, before us today and are also watching. Um, you know, the, the uh, city of Chesapeake, the hospital, uh, the Chesapeake Department of Health, we've worked very closely this past year. And while our frontline workers are truly our healthcare heroes, it does take a team of non-clinical people to support them. Uh, that includes, you know, our city officials. And also, um, can you show the next slide? So featured in this, um, uh, kind of image to the bottom, uh, you'll see um, Mayor Whitehurst, um, Dr. Hugo Owens, W.P. Clare, Senior Robert Carter, those that also stood before you. I think we have to honor them too. And um, so um, you know, we've been busy this past year, notwithstanding the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, we're investing in our community to serve present and future generations. And if you'll watch uh, the next slide, please. The Chesapeake Hospital Authority Board exists to support the health and the welfare of the citizens of the city of Chesapeake and the region. Every three years, a needs assessment is completed to identify the most pressing health care needs and gaps in our community. Because of this assessment, we determine that an expansion of hospital services in the area of cancer treatment, heart health, and behavioral health was necessary. In addition, since we are known as the place in Hampton Roads for the delivery of healthy babies, we wanted to expand our mother baby health care services too. Dedication and service to the community is as important to our values today as it was in 1976 when the hospital opened its doors. We are excited for the opening of our new critical care tower. In that tower will be 72,000 square feet of new care space. The tower will consist of a 30-bed critical care unit with all of the latest technologies that will allow us to care for our most acute patient population. We will have a 28-bed step-down unit with all the modern conveniences of patient and family-centered care. The sixth floor will have a 36-bed neurotelemetry unit that will allow us to provide more acute services for our growing neuroscience population. We are excited to be able to offer patient and family-centered care in our new critical care tower to the members of our community. We broke ground in January 2020. And even though we had planned for this several years ago, none of us would have known the, the, what to have expected this past year so tumultuous. And such a reminder of the importance of provi the provision of health care services to our community. Our community, by the way, has been so gracious to us, recognizing us as health care heroes. And for that, we are very, very thankful. Chesapeake Regional Healthcare and the city of Chesapeake have an incredibly unique relationship created out of necessity when others chose not to provide adequate medical services to our citizens. The city has grown and our citizens' needs have increased. But Chesapeake Regional has always been there. That is why if you talk to a Chesapeake resident, they will tell you Chesapeake Regional will always be their first choice.
Thank you. Next, next slide. So um, just by the way, that night image uh, you'll soon be seeing within the next uh, year. It's, it's imminent. Uh, this past year, we did invest in our neurosciences program. We are well on the way to becoming a comprehensive stroke center for our community. Um, next slide. We are building also for our future to have an open heart program to offer advanced comprehensive cardiology services. Uh, we will need your support, your community support. It requires a certificate of public need, uh, but we are building for our future and remain committed to this endeavor. The next slide. We are um, very uh, grateful that the commissioner recently approved um, our COPN, Certificate of Public Need, to have a 20-bed adult behavioral health care unit. As soon as the critical care tower is completed, we'll be able to begin construction on this. Um, Chesapeake's arguably the, the largest city in the state that doesn't have an inpatient program, so we're excited to provide that service. The next slide. We do have a new cancer center. I want to um, uh, just make mention that Virginia Oncology Associates is moving into the building. They'll be, off, they'll be seeing patients beginning next week. Um, the, um, the cancer center was, uh, the charge to open the cancer center on our campus was led by uh, Mayor Sid Oman back in the day. Uh, Mayor Oman, uh, his legacy will always be honored in our cancer center. Uh, we're happy to have, and all, we'll always have the Omen Heritage Lobby. Um, as you may know, Mayor Omen was a two-time mayor, affectionately known as Mr. Chesapeake. And, but within this new cancer center, we call it new because we're offering so many services that we've never offered before. Uh, so one-stop shopping for our patients. The next slide. We're very grateful to Dennis Elmer uh, Priority Toyota, uh, their generosity and investment into our cancer center is an investment in this community. And we're very pleased uh, that our new cancer center will be named the Priority Toyota Cancer Center. And um, I just can't uh, thank Dennis enough uh, for not only his investment, but being such a very fine person and a community leader. So thank you, Dennis. Um, the next slide. Uh, just lastly, we have many more announcements to make um, in the near future. We're very excited about what we're doing, and we're committed to our community, and we're very, very appreciative of all of our community leaders, um, and it's just a pleasure to, to take care of uh, and provide uh, for your needs. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Reese. We appreciate it. There's some great things going on at, uh, at Chesapeake Regional. As I mentioned, Dollar Tree is our member spotlight sponsor. It's my honor to welcome Chris Williams to deliver remarks on behalf of Dollar Tree. Chris. Thank you. Three years ago at this event, we announced something special is happening in Greenbrier. Since those remarks in 2018, the Summit Point development team has been hard at work planning, designing, building. Since 2018, we have completed 440,000 square feet of office space, 133 residential units, over 30,000 square feet of commercial space, not to mention 3,000 parking spaces. The vision is now reality. Summit Point is the center of our region's largest central business district. Residents have moved into their new homes, office tenants are open, and additional office tenants are being signed. New restaurants are also under construction, with several more big announcements coming soon. New office, retail, and restaurant prospects are touring Summit Point every week. The momentum is building. During 2020, not only did we complete our first residential and office buildings, we also completed our, our Summit Point's second 1,500 car parking garage, which opens one week from today. 
you'll see this amazing structure as you drive along Crossways Boulevard. Next week, we'll break ground on Mosaic, the $68 million multi-use development will feature an additional 270 upscale residences with ground floor commercial space and Summit Point's third parking deck. Mosaic will open summer of 2022 and we can't wait. Our waiting list is growing daily. As the world recovers from this awful pandemic, we're excited to welcome people back when the time is right. We're excited to have patrons come for dinner, meet for a cold beer at Wasserhund, have brunch at First Watch, walk the streets, meet your friends and family, but most importantly, we're excited to see people connect here at Summit Point. At the crossroads of the Hampton Roads region, Summit Point is rising and living up to its lofty name. This is Coastal Virginia's newest metropolitan center, a dynamic destination where businesses, residents, and visitors connect and thrive. It's an experience 10 years in the making. What was once a vision is now reality. With $330 million in new construction underway, transforming Summit Point into a walkable hub that will include restaurants, shops, parks, apartment communities, and signature office buildings. The 69-acre campus is in the heart of Chesapeake's Central Business District, the largest business district in the region. Welcoming outdoor spaces with wide, walkable sidewalks, shady plazas and cafes, bright murals and captivating sculptures, luxury amenities and contemporary architecture. This is truly a pedestrian paradise, an engaging hub where office, residential, retail, restaurants, and even a brewery connect and bring Summit Point to life. Summit Point is currently zoned for 1 million square feet of office, 500,000 square feet of retail, 250,000 square feet of hospitality and conference facilities, and 1,400 plus residences. Summit Point is also a rising force in the business world, with top regional and national companies finding exciting new opportunities here. At 555 Bel Air, located between Volvo Parkway and Bel Air Avenue, a new standard has emerged, with five levels of office space overlooking an impressive multi-story lobby, which features a stunning mural by internationally recognized artist Matthew Curran. This is a place for big ideas. Leasing is currently underway for office, restaurant, and retail space, and new tenants will quickly discover they're in good company. Joining the ranks of businesses like Davis Law, Fosser Hunt Brewing Company, featuring authentic German-style beer and delicious pizza, and First Watch, the award-winning breakfast, brunch, and lunch restaurant with an outdoor patio and bar. Summit Point is life elevated, and it's a life people want to lead. Look at Helix, the development's first apartment residences, which were quickly leased within three months on the market. This is modern living with the ultimate concierge lifestyle, a rooftop sky lounge, deluxe amenities, and a 24-7 fitness center. It's a community alive with special events, from food trucks and movie nights to game day parties, live music, and more. Next up is Mosaic with 270 luxury apartments overlooking a dramatic interior courtyard and pool complex with resort amenities. This latest effort launches $68 million in new construction. At the intersection of Bel Air Avenue and Summit Point Drive, signature restaurants will stand alongside a graceful colonnade and plaza for outdoor dining. Summit Point, its urban walkability, bold new architecture, upscale residences, and a thriving mix of businesses, retailers, and restaurants, all within easy reach. This is Chesapeake's new destination, and we're ready for you to connect here.
Well, Chris, thank you for bringing us that information. What an amazing investment into the city of Chesapeake, and I might add the entire region. So thank you and Dollar Tree so very much. As I mentioned, uh, we're so proud again this year to have as our presenting sponsor, uh, Town Bank. It's now my honor to introduce the president of Town Bank Chesapeake, David Hare. David. Thank you, and good afternoon. It's my pleasure for me to be here today to welcome you to the Chesapeake State of the City Address. Town Bank is honored once again to be presenting sponsor for the series of five State of the City Addresses. For many years, hundreds of business, civic, and community leaders from across Hampton Roads have come together for the State of the City meetings. And we all hope that by next spring, we'll once again be able to meet together in person. The past year has been an incredibly challenging one for local businesses. I applaud the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce for stepping in to help in the midst of this unprecedented economic storm. The Chamber's COVID response site and COVID recovery site were recognized as the model that all organizations should follow. The Chamber also provided virtual education on everything from team bonding to diversity to mental wellness. Town Bank, for its part, was honored to help local businesses through the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. We were able to support over 6,700 local businesses with more than $1.2 billion of needed funding. And we are now actively participating in the second round of PPP. Town Bank has grown over the years from three offices in 1999 to more than 40 offices today throughout Hampton Roads and Central Virginia, as well as Northeastern and Central North Carolina. We continue our commitment to serving others and enriching lives by supporting hundreds of local charitable organizations through donations, scholarships, and grants. Since our founding, Town Bank and the Town Bank Foundation have, con have contributed more than $76 million to the communities we serve. And now it's my honor to introduce Mayor Rick West, who has been doing a great job leading the city of Chesapeake through this past very challenging year. From virtual council meetings, to vaccine distribution, to planning when and how to reopen schools, Mayor West and his team have worked hard to make sure that all citizens of Chesapeake remain safe. I look forward to hearing more about this city's accomplishments in 2020. Mayor West was elected mayor in 2018 after filling the unexpired term of Dr. Alan Krasnoff in 2017. He was first elected to city council in 2008. Mayor West is a lifelong resident of Chesapeake. He is a retired educator from the Chesapeake Public School System, and he is also a former middle school principal. Dr. West serves as a member of the Hampton Roads Military and Federal Facilities Alliance, the Eastern Virginia Regional Industrial Facility Authority, the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization, the Joint Hampton Roads Workforce Council and Greater Peninsula Workforce Board, and the Hampton Roads Transportation Accountability Commission. Please join me in welcoming Mayor West. Thank you so much, David. It certainly is uh, an, an honor to be introduced by a former mayor. Uh, and so I know you can identify with what it must feel like up here. So thank you so much for that introduction and, and for being such a big part of this program. I also, to you, uh, Brian, and, and all the members of the uh, Hampton Roads Chamber, uh, and Priscilla for organizing this event and for uh, hosting this event once again. Uh, even in, in the uh, challenges that this uh, pandemic has presented, you found a way to make this day happen, and we are so appreciative of you here in Chesapeake. Also, I want to acknowledge uh, the great things that Dollar Tree uh, is doing. Chris just gave a presentation, an exciting presentation, which I'm sitting at my table just jumping up and down. Uh, there's so much excitement for what's uh, this crown jewel that's going to be part of our city and uh, a vital part of, of where we are going uh, in the future. So thank you, and to, to Bob Sasser, I still think of uh, the time when pandemic was in this was in the we were in the middle of it and I asked Bob I said Bob you know people are hunkered down they're not going retail they're not 
going anywhere, but he said, Rick, they will. And yes, indeed, they will, and we're so excited that time is coming. You know, after delivering uh, for the last two years this state of the city and having attended uh, uh, other states of the city, my friend uh, Bobby Dyer at Virginia Beach and Norfolk and uh, throughout uh, Southampton Roads, uh, I've been doing dozens of those. So after, after having done that, it really is exciting for me to be here today to be able to share with you the many challenges uh, that our city and cities all over the, our nation have have faced for the, for the last uh, 12 months. But more importantly, it's, it's really my uh, honor and uh, privilege to be able to present to you the many opportunities that we have as a city in the coming, coming years. You know, looking back at uh, 2020, we could take a whole afternoon to address and still not cover everything that Chesapeake, uh, our region, our, our state and our nation has endured since we last gathered. But no one could have predicted that, no one would, could have predicted what was to come since we were here last year. In fact, Chesapeake State of the City Address was the last large event that was held before the lockdown rules went into, the, into effect. And while we're certainly not out of the woods yet, I'm excited to be here today as we have taken great strides in stopping the spread of this virus. And I'd be remiss if I did not offer the standard reminders to everyone to continue wearing your mask, continue to keep that six foot distance, and continue uh, to wash your hands. I have my four kids mask right here. I do want to take us uh, this time to uh, offer special thanks to our health director, Dr. Nancy Welch, and her entire professional team uh, of volunteers and professionals at the Chesapeake Health Department for the awesome job that they've done this year. And I certainly would be remiss if I did not acknowledge our incredible, our incredible partnership that we have had with our own uh, local hospital. So thank you so much, Reese Jackson, your team at the Chesapeake uh, Regional Health care for all that you do uh, every day uh, to save and to serve our citizens. And if it wasn't for the efforts of our hospital and our health department and all the partners that have joined, like our churches, I would not be able to stand here today and tell you that 70, over 75% of citizens 65 and older have been fully vaccinated. As a matter of fact, if you look at just our adult population, 40% have had one vaccination. And we continue to put shots in arms every single day. You know, Chesapeake attacked this pa pandemic as we do most every challenge. First of all, we planned, and then we organized, and then we united. Now, I wish I could say that was the same was true for every agency, particularly on the state level. They were supposed to be both a lead and support role in a crisis of this nature. But time and time again, this city and cities all over Hampton Roads and their dedicated professionals have been called upon to supplement and even replace processes and programs that failed at the state level, particularly in the area of the vaccination planning. But we're fortunate to have both forward-thinking professionals and creative staff willing and able to step up to fill the breach and to ensure our citizens get the best possible services. I'm proud to note that Chesapeake was the first Hampton Road city to reopen after the initial pandemic shutdown. And we remain in the forefront to ensure that our citizens receive the services they both need and deserve. Everything from providing safe, clean water to ensuring that the trash is taken out without uh, interruption, establishing curbside library pickup books to help our, ch our children. I'm most impressed with what our school system has done to be able to stay open and to provide parents with opportunities. This, to me, demonstrates that pandemic or not, Chesapeake truly is a city that cares. You know, of course, uh, this pandemic 
it wasn't the only thing for which 2020 will be remembered. It will be recalled for the name of George Floyd, who died in Minneapolis and whose legacy continues to be written today. As we as a community and as a nation work to improve racial equity, in the days following Floyd's death, the Hampton Roads black pastors organized with the assistance of our Chesapeake Police Department and our city, a peaceful march on our city hall. And we continue to meet with this group and other groups working to reshape and redefine what equality truly means for all of us. Over the summer, Chesapeake also named its first chief equity officer, our own deputy manager, Dr. Wanda Bailey. And I know Dr. Bailey and our city manager knows that she is the one who will keep us focused on this critical topic in the coming years. Over the past year, we have also learned how little regard our Virginia General Assembly truly has for the desires, the wishes, and the needs of our localities. In a session complicated by COVID-19, certain of our own Chesapeake delegation seemed in many ways to make a special effort to not support localities, but to blatantly rise up against them. From issues directly related to the pandemic, such as closings and regulations, to an irresponsible and ill-conceived overreach into forcing changes in local elections without sufficient public input. Ladies and gentlemen, the General Assembly and the governor have driven a wedge between localities in Richmond, the likes of which we have not seen in many, many years. But I am hopeful that following the fall's election cycle, cooler heads and a spirit of partnership can be restored. So at least you think that a look back on the past uh, of this year is all negative. Let me assure you that it really is not. In the midst of challenge, Chesapeake people did what they do best. They rose up and they joined together and gave of themselves to help others and to continue moving our great city forward. To be sure, progress has slowed down due to this pandemic, but you will hear today example after example of businesses, organizations, and even individuals who have done amazing things. We remain a city firmly focused on the future with a great plans and great aspirations. We are a community what I, built upon what I call two ships, relationships and partnerships. Every day we reach out here and at home and across our region and beyond looking to build strong partnerships of every sort. We know that we can count on those relationships that we've formed with our neighbors to help when we need it. And we are equally ready to lend our hands, our hearts, and our minds to helping others. This is truly the Chesapeake way. It's something that no pandemic, nor crisis, nor turmoil will ever change. So let me turn our focus now towards the future and talk about where Chesapeake is headed. The pandemic has given us a unique opportunity to step back a bit and to evaluate not only where we are, but who we are, and truly take stock in what we think Chesapeake can and should aspire to become. It's also given me a, a chance to take a step back and to make a few changes of how this state of the city is presented. You'll notice that I'm not wearing a tie uh, today and that our setting may be seem a little more casual. Well, that's, that's intentional because I want to bring our dynamic, our energetic and innovative city manager, Christopher Price, in for a discussion about the work that he's been doing to help our city and our city council define a vision and strategic anchors for our city. So Chris, welcome. 
Thank you, Mayor West. It's, it's a great honor to be here today, and, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I know, Mayor, of course you know this, many of you that have met me know this, but I was very fortunate to start my career uh, with the city of Chesapeake as an intern uh, back in 1996, and, and I've, I've had a long journey, a lot of different great organizations, but none so great as the city of Chesapeake, both as an organization and as a community. And, and I tried for 17 years um, to make my way back. I finally did it and I'm even more blessed to now serve as the city's chief executive officer. And uh, of course, it's been interesting this year guiding us uh, um, with, with, with you and council and the community through the pandemic, but I'm also very pleased uh, to, as you said, take a step back, talk about who we are today, what we wanna be in the future, how we're gonna get there, and have those uh, conversations with the community. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to the coming years to be able to make progress on, on council and the community's vision and, and the way we intend to achieve that vision. So 17 years uh, since you, you decided to come back, so I guess that is true that, uh, that with age there is wisdom, and so you were smart enough to come back to Chesapeake, Very and true. we're so glad that you did, Chris. So uh, before we start, let me just say that you know a lot of work, we, we have already done a lot of work on this vision and strategic anchors, but we are, realize that a, a lot more work needs to be done. As a matter of fact, this is probably a, a never-ending process, and I want to be clear here uh, that this is not necessarily totally new concepts. We've had such a strong and successful foundation on which to build, so it is really a continuation of where we've been. So with that said, Chris, why don't you just give us an introduction to the process and why it's so vital for the health of our city and uh, for today and for tomorrow. I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, Chesapeake is a, it's a wonderful place, but it's a large place. It's a growing place. Uh, we're, we're a $1.2 billion annual municipal corporation, 4,000 employees. We're Virginia's second largest city. We're one of America's 100 largest cities, and we continue to grow. And, and there's a lot of opportunities in Chesapeake today, a wealth of opportunities tomorrow. And for any corporation this big and any community this size, it's critically important that we are crystal clear about who we we are and what we want to be. And the way we do that is being clear on our vision. And so council has spent a lot of time over the past year refining and re-articulating uh, our vision of what we want to be. It's my job then to translate that vision into reality and take those 4,000 team members to make that happen every day. And so if you had a chance ever to take a look at our vision, like many visions, it's a lot of words, but you can really boil it down to its essence in, in one key sentence that we will make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. And that's critically important for us, and it's the, it's the yardstick that we measure ourselves against every day. And that's the what we intend to do. The how we intend to do it is being who we always have been. We're the city that cares. And so we're always going to provide outstanding service to our customers and our community. And we're gonna do it in a way that's fiscally responsible and sustainable. So those three points serve as our strategic anchors. We will make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. We'll provide outstanding service to our customers and our community. And we will be fiscally responsible and sustainable. So as a large organization, a large municipal corporation, those are the ties that bind us all together. We're in a lot of different business lines like any city. We're in public safety and well-being and human services and community development and parks and libraries and recreation, a lot, a lot, of, different, a lot of different priorities. But the business that we're in is serving our community. And so those three anchors are the ties that bind us all together every day. And that's how we will drive performance to helping council in the community achieve that vision. And imagine the power of all 4,000 of us working together with our community, our 250,000 residents, our hundreds of thousands of businesses and employees, and our millions of travelers and visitors to and through the community, and our partner, our sister cities here within the region. Imagine the power of all of us working, working together to accomplish our vision for the future, the region's vision for the future, uh, and, and, and making sure that, that Chesapeake truly is an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. 
But I'm not going to talk to you about all of that uh, to a great extent today. I'm going to leave that to our team members. We've provided uh, some videos of some of our senior leaders throughout the organization to talk to you about the ways in which we intend to help our community make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. And we start with live. So what we'd like to do right now is show you a video on what we are doing today and working with our community to make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live. Chesapeake has numerous great places to live and each is unique and with our 353 square miles of diverse landscapes we have something for everyone looking to make Chesapeake their home. Whether it's traditional neighborhoods with front porches and tree-lined streets or suburban style neighborhoods with backyard barbecues or new and exciting mixed-use communities with shopping and dining right outside your door there are many choices for Chesapeake residents. Chesapeake's comprehensive plan is based on a vision of a collection of many unique villages and activity centers. Some are historical, traditional communities, while others represent new lifestyle opportunities to meet the changing needs of our residents. The plan outlines the needed actions to make the vision a reality. A great example of both a traditional and historic community is that of South Norfolk. South Norfolk has been experiencing a renaissance with young families looking to connect with their neighbors and their community. South Norfolk is one of our older historic and traditional communities with lots of community pride and heart. Here you will find a nationally registered historic district complete with 4th of July parades and community gardens. The implementation of the Poindexter Corridor Strategic Development Plan has strategically led to both private and public investment in our beautiful parks, a new Jordan Bridge, and a new Poindexter Street Bridge, a new streetscape for Poindexter Street, the new Four Kids Headquarters, the new Woodley Shops on Poindexter, home of the new Family Dollar Store, and a new South Norfolk Municipal Building that is currently under design. Another great older community is Indian River. Indian River developed as a suburb of Norfolk in the early 1900s and flanks the tributaries of the Indian River. It's quiet, quaint, and full of mature trees. Here you will find pre- and post-World War II style residential communities, the Oakland Historic District, and neighborhoods like Norfolk Highlands and Georgetown. Working with residents of Indian River, we are preparing a new strategic plan for the area that includes strategies to reinvest in the community and to enhance its already great living opportunities. For example, the plan focuses on revitalizing the Indian River Corridor with new bikeway and trail connections and seeks to create more public access to the Indian River. This plan will be going into its public hearing phase later this spring. Moving a bit further south, you will find the master plan community of Greenbrier. Greenbrier includes a collection of neighborhoods with numerous housing options all connected with trails, a golf course, and open spaces, all surrounding one of the most active commercial and employment centers in Hampton Roads. Because of the great chemistry in Greenbrier, the Fortune 150 company Dollar Tree located not only its corporate headquarters, but also invested in the development of the all-new Summit Point mixed-use community. Summit Point offers its residents an urban lifestyle with shopping, dining, and entertainment, all within walking distance. The 69-acre project in whole encompasses $300 million in new construction investment, 1 million square feet of office space, 500,000 square feet of retail space, and over 1,400 new residences. Recognizing the impact and opportunity that Summit Point is bringing, the city will be starting a new strategic plan to keep Greenbrier positioned as a premier place to live and work in the region and to offer Chesapeake residents with more lifestyle choices. The Western Branch area of the city is undergoing a transformation along the Portsmouth Boulevard corridor. The city continues to implement the recommendations of the Portsmouth Boulevard Western Branch Task Force, including initiatives designed to revitalize and enhance economic vitality for the area. Amazon is in the process of opening a 630,000 square foot distribution center, which is contributing to the continued growth of the corridor. The Jolliffe Landing and Grove at Western Branch communities are coming to fruition and will continue to provide great places to live in Chesapeake. Along those lines, and realizing the importance of connectivity, the city continues to explore pedestrian improvements to the Portsmouth Boulevard corridor to make connections to both sides of I-664, as well as gateway and improved landscape designs. Great Bridge, another historic village in Chesapeake, is the home of the Revolutionary War Battle of Great Bridge. Residents in Great Bridge enjoy close proximity to the historic ANC Canal, a variety of housing choices, 
parks, and plenty of small and local businesses. In order to protect the historic nature of the area and to take full advantage of its prime location on the ANC Canal, City Council created special design guidelines and standards for development in the area, and we recently adopted a new zoning overlay to implement those standards. Great Bridge is poised for significant reinvestment. Chesapeake has many great places to live, and although each is unique, they do have one thing in common. They're all full of good neighbors that care about their community. And after all, Chesapeake is the city that cares. Chris, that, uh, that was very interesting to kind of see our city from, from this place. You know, having lived here all my life, it's oftentimes uh, you take things for granted. You don't see things that you would normally. You've been back and seen things that probably I wouldn't have recognized. We also uh, have been a city that has had consistent constant residential growth, which is sometimes a very controversial issue. Uh, you and I and the council have talked about the future of residential growth. Would you mind sharing with us some of the, your thoughts on, on where and how we might want to consider in the future? Yeah, thank you for that. It, it's interesting because uh, Chesapeake, like many growing communities, um, you do sort of have those uh, opportunities for growth, but those opportunities certainly provide challenges. And really the key is to make sure that your growth doesn't outpace your ability to provide services or change the character of the community, that it's additive um, to what you are today, what you're trying to be in the future. Um, when we did the visioning process with council, um, and, and this is true for me as someone that's returning after 17 years, Chesapeake is, it's, a, it's the second largest city in Virginia, but it still retains that small town feel and that small town character. And so even as phenomenal new projects like Summit Point are, are creating a downtown and, and, and central hub for the city of Chesapeake, we have, as, as uh, Jalais said, many wonderful communities. And so I think it's always important to be mindful as we're bringing new communities online that they're additive to what they're trying to achieve. And that's from a design perspective, a connectivity perspective, and the types of amenities that are our community today, but more importantly, the communities of the future are, are going to, to demand. If uh, I'm a former economic developer, and I will tell you that um, historically, economic developers have chased land and zoning and infrastructure and tax incentives and, and other uh, financial in incentives, um, but the key today is chasing talent, and the winning communities now really, but certainly in the future, are going to be great places. And so when we're making these decisions from the planning perspective, the zoning perspective, all the way down to our, our, our permitting and, and the kind of choices we're making, it's really incumbent upon us as leaders of the community to work with our community to make sure that everything we're doing is, is value added uh, now and in the future. Thank you. So with that, uh, I, I think that's a good segue to talk about our, our next segment. We, uh, we talked about live, uh, and, and it's really important, but why do people choose to live in the city of Chesapeake? Most people will tell you uh, that it's, it's the quality of our schools, and, and I know that's, that's true for many of the families. It's true for my family. Um, and so what we would like to do is show you a little video about what it means to learn in the city of Chesapeake. I am so proud to serve as a superintendent for Chesapeake Public Schools, and I'm always happy to take an opportunity to talk about our exceptional school district. Chesapeake is an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play, and I've always regarded our city as a great place to learn. I have enough experience to make that judgment. My experience ranges all the way back to my childhood when I was a student right here in Chesapeake. As a student, teacher, administrator, and now in my current position, I have seen the hard work of every member of our educational family dedicate themselves to our students. That makes us a strong school district. In my own family, I've seen the importance of both academic and career and technical options for our students. My own daughter took the academic path and has found great success, and my son took the career and technical path in HVAC and he's found himself a very successful career. That means we must have a strong career and technical education program that has a wide range of offerings for our students. Scholarship opportunities for our career and technical students, a career center signing day, 
event that we have each year. In Chesapeake, we did receive a Go Virginia grant, in particular in computer science. Now at our middle schools, we're offering computer science courses for our students to follow that particular pathway as well. In addition to that, we celebrate the great accomplishments of our career and technical students because this is a viable option for our students in our community. These options lead to great careers. Uh, college is not for everyone. Career and technical education is a great and viable option for many of our students. As you can see, Chesapeake Public Schools has made career and technical education a high priority along with other academic programs and opportunities. Our success and this endeavor is a large part because of our partnerships with city government, a large number of businesses, and institutions of higher learning like TCC. We appreciate the support of our community in this work, and we look forward to expanding these opportunities. Thank you for inviting me to talk about the best school district in Virginia. That's great. You know, uh, Dr. Cotton talked about traditionally as educators talk about the academic side. He talked about career and technical education, which I, I think is a great opportunity for me to to mention the uh, the uh, mayor of Norfolk, Kenny Alexander, also serving as the chancellor at Centera College, has helped usher uh, expansion of Centera College in uh, in Greenbrier. They're bringing programs like electric car maintenance. Uh, I think he's talked to Dennis Elmer about that, which has been pretty exciting, uh, to solar energy technology repair. Again, you know, a, a future business that, uh, that will need a, a workforce for. So that's, that's very exciting. Um, one of the challenges that we have, Chris, in Chesapeake is, is continuing to provide our schools with adequate facilities. I know we're, we're studying that. Could you, could you comment? Yes, we have a joint partnership uh, between City Council and the School Board to identify what are the capital facility needs uh, for today and what are the needs uh, for Chesapeake moving forward. So the pandemic has uh, sort of sidelined uh, those efforts to some extent because they're really critical decisions for the city's future and we really want a lot of stakeholder engagement. So um, given that folks can't get together and have the kind of engagement necessary to make those sort of decisions, we've really done the work on the analytics um, f and financial side, and then post-pandemic, we'll really start engaging the community to make sure that uh, people can plug in and participate on, on what are the needs, where are, are they needed, how much uh, will those needs cost, and what's the timing uh, of those needs. And really, the, the goal is uh, it, both within the City of Chesapeake Public Schools, but then also with partners like Tidewater Community College to continue continue that pipeline from education to workforce development. And, and that's really what it's all about. I, I talked earlier about making great places, and I, I, I talked about, of course, uh, here what it's what it's like to learn in the city of Chesapeake. But working in the city of Chesapeake is, is really key to ensuring our long-term financial uh, sustainability and viability. So while we want to attract young people that are talented, we want to educate our young people that are here today and hope to to get them to stay here tomorrow. The key is providing uh, great jobs and great opportunities. And so I'd like to show you a little bit about what we're doing to make Chesapeake an exceptional place to work. Chesapeake is indeed a great place to work uh, for a variety of different reasons. One of the reasons why Chesapeake's a great location to work is because we have a thriving business community here within the city. The number one reason that companies come to Chesapeake is our location. We're very fortunate that Virginia and Hampton Roads are at the midpoint of the Atlantic coast, and Chesapeake is in the center of everything that Hampton Roads has to offer. Here in the Economic Development Department, we have the opportunity to tell the story of Chesapeake, not just locally and throughout the region, but all over the country and all over the world. In fact, there are more international businesses that are located here in Chesapeake than any other city in Hampton Roads. A big reason for that is the Port of Virginia. Our access to the Port of Virginia makes us an excellent location for logistics and other international businesses.
but probably the biggest hallmark of our business community and the economy here in Chesapeake is the diversity of opportunity. Chesapeake is home to companies from all over the globe, like Plosser American, an Austrian-based company that is celebrating its 50th year here in our city. It's also home to some domestic companies, companies like Dollar Tree, the region's only Fortune 500 company in Hampton Roads. But even with those large businesses, we are always accommodating to our small business community, our veteran-owned businesses, our women and minority-owned businesses as well. Companies like RFK Solutions, a woman, minority, and veteran-owned business that's located in the Western Branch section of the city of Chesapeake. We have a community that embraces our business community and a business community that embraces our people as well. Our workforce here in Chesapeake and the Hampton Roads region is truly unparalleled. With exiting military, college graduates, we have a workforce that replenishes itself year after year, making it very attractive for companies that are looking for fresh young talent. Chesapeake is home to a variety of companies from a variety of different industries. And a lot of people want to be in Chesapeake because we have so much to offer. However, if we don't have places for those businesses to land when they reach Chesapeake, we will be at a competitive disadvantage. That's why I'm pleased to say that the City Council, along with the Economic Development Authority, is aggressively going out and identifying parcels of land throughout the city that will allow us to accommodate businesses of the future as well as the businesses of today that want to grow in our great city. Chesapeake has and continues to grow in phenomenal ways. Over the past four years, Chesapeake has created over 7,000 new jobs with over $1 billion in private sector capital investment. So again, it's not just our location that makes Chesapeake a great place. It's our people, it's the diversity of the businesses that we have here that make Chesapeake a great place to work. You know, I mentioned in the uh, introductory remarks about we hear about amazing things that have been accomplished. I, I promised uh, Placer America that I would at least wear uh, for a segment of our state of the city because they are a big part of that 271,000 uh, million uh, capital investments that have taken place in our city this past year. And as, as Stephen just said, over a billion over the past three years, which is incredible, creating 2,680 jobs jobs. So, Chris, you know, we have in our audience my good friend, uh, the mayor from Virginia Beach, Bobby Dyer, or Bobby D, as he likes to call himself. And in his state of the city, uh, I, I, watching that, he did a w wonderful job presenting uh, the wind industry that's uh, coming in through Virginia Beach. And you know, for the rest of us, for other cities, how is that going to impact or benefit the rest of the region, particularly Chesapeake? That's a great question. Uh, before I answer that question, and I should say with someone with this hairline, I may need to borrow that hat, but, <laughs> and I appreciate that opportunity. But um, you're exactly right. Virginia Beach is becoming a global leader in, in the wind energy and really leading the way. And I, um, as someone who's worked in a variety of regions, um, uh, really in several states, uh, including several regions of Virginia, I, I know Hampton Roads gets a, a bad reputation for um, not cooperating, and I, I just don't see it. Uh, Virginia Beach is leading the way, and we are all there supporting them. The business community supports them. Virginia Beach's sister city supports them. Our partners at the, at the state level support them. I know the community. Um, it's it really is a, a, an example of a rising tide lifts all boats. And this industry could be transformative for, in a variety of ways. So certainly it will create jobs in, in the manufacturing sector and, and the logistics and transportation sector. Um, and those jobs will go to a, a variety of locations. But also, um, uh, perhaps just as importantly, more and more companies across the globe are building um, building into sustainability portfolios. So they're they're changing the way they do business. They're locating in communities that that have key elements of sustainability practices. And a commitment to wind energy is part of that. So attracting communities to the region that want to be a part of a community that's investing in alternative and renewable energies is really critical to the 
region's future economic health. And so while Virginia Beach is leading the way, we are all in partnership to make this happen. And, and we truly appreciate the opportunities to, to work with for Virginia Beach. Uh, um, they, they have an outstanding team and, and, and we appreciate being part of that team. And um, it's interesting when, when, when we talk about uh, regional partnerships, uh, um, it, it, it truly, I, I think, is a mantra that, that can't be, be said enough um, that, that we are not only are getting it right, but, but getting stronger every day. And uh, as, as now I've been here 15 months, I'm one of the more senior city managers in, in Southside Hampton Roads. That's hard to believe, but I will tell you, I know the elected officials' relationships are strong, but the um, senior executive relationships are very strong as well and, and continue to grow every day. Thanks. One of the things I'd like to talk about if we uh, pivoting a little bit is uh, another kind of economic development that often gets overlooked, and but it's very important in, in Southampton Roads and, and certainly here in the city of Chesapeake, and that's farming. Um, you, you see a lot of taglines for a lot of places that they want to be places where you can live, learn, and play. Um, farming is often a, that, a missing piece, and it's, it's an important piece, and it's an important piece of keeping Chesapeake the character that it is today, the character we want to be um, in the future, and it is a, a vital segment of our economy. But farming is very different from what it's historically been, and, and it's, a, it's a very challenging industry to be in. It's challenging for, for farmers for a variety of reasons, uh, particularly because the margins aren't great and, and, and are, are getting more challenging. Uh, there are pressures from, from growth and development opportunities. Younger generations of, uh, of, um, are, aren't getting into farming to the extent extent that they were in the past. So there's a lot of headwinds. And so one of the things that the city really wants to do to make, make sure that farming stays a viable part of the economy is help to uh, create those opportunities for success, to be mindful of the challenges the farming community is happening, and to help try to set the stage and create opportunities for future success. So we'd like to show you a little bit about what we're doing to help Chesapeake uh, be an exceptional place to farm. Chesapeake's unique mix of rural and urban landscapes provide residents and visitors not only with picturesque vistas, but also a diverse range of opportunities for living and working. While the city spreads out over more than 350 square miles, it's possible to easily drive between scenes of open farm fields with not a soul in sight to a bustling business corridor in the space of just 15 minutes. Chesapeake farmers grow a variety of crops, from corn to soybeans and everything in between. Some of their products turn up on tables around the globe, departing either by truck, train, or ship. Agribusiness firms dot the city's waterfront, and Chesapeake plays a notable part in stocking store shelves here and abroad. A significant portion of the agricultural output stays right here at home, available for selection and enjoyment at the city's many farmers markets. With many families discovering the benefit of eating locally grown produce, the city's smaller farms have seen growth in both output and variety. A summer Saturday at a local market provides a colorful variety of choices for later meals. Chesapeake is a city blessed by Mother Nature with abundant natural resources, and it's also home to citizens dedicated to protecting and sustaining the water, land, and air. Environmental projects of every size and scope take place throughout the community, ranging from simple litter cleanup efforts to large land reclamation and living shoreline projects along the waterfront. City staff and many private groups partner together in these efforts, all under the umbrella of a well-defined set of land use and zoning principles. The city's Open Space and Agricultural Preservation, or OSAP, program allows the city to purchase development rights from willing landowners in exchange for a preservation easement on their property. The landowner receives fair market value for the development rights of the land, but still retains ownership as well as the ability to have a home on the property and use the land for agricultural or open space purposes. OSAP along with programs around the Navy's Fentress Airfield have allowed the city not only to retain open spaces, but also limit encroachment on this vital naval training asset on Chesapeake's eastern border. The Navy plays a significant part in many aspects of Chesapeake life, with several facilities in the city and thousands of active duty and retired personnel and families calling Chesapeake home. 
opportunities to experience, participate in, and benefit from the agricultural and environmental sides of Chesapeake Abound, making everything farm a key element in the city's strategic anchors. It only takes a short walk or drive or purchase of local crops to realize how deeply rooted Chesapeake farmers are in our community's heritage. Excuse me, so uh, growing up in, in what we called, jokingly called, downtown Great Bridge, uh, my grandfather had a business, a Cook's Variety store that sold hats and that kind of thing to farmers. And he left, you know, sometime around mid 60s saying that, you know, he couldn't make a living. Besides, they put a stoplight at the end of Cedar Road. It made it too bustling for him to want to hang around. But some say that the whole farm, you sort of touched on the changing farmers, uh, changing of farming, it's challenges that they face, but some people are saying that it's on a decline, uh, and so why continue to be interested or invest? And uh, you have some ideas about where it's headed or why the decline or how we can keep the decline from occurring? We do. We, we work on this a lot here in the city of Chesapeake because it is an important part of, of who we are and what we want to be in the future. And, and, and there's a couple things uh, in addition to what was mentioned in the video that I think provide opportunities. Number one is the city along with the other cities here within the region are getting heavily invested in deployment of broadband. And, and that will do a, a great uh, amount of work towards accelerating Chesapeake and the region becoming an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. But particularly with regard regard to farming, there are a lot of new technologies that, that farmers around the country are using to, to uh, from satellite imagery uh, to just-in-time uh, delivery of services and reports and, and information and analytics um, to help make decisions about everything from planting to harvesting and everything in between. And technology is becoming a critical component of the farming industry. So the deployment of broadband is one way that we can accelerate uh, bringing that technological change to this critical industry here within the city of Chesapeake. The other is to recognize trends uh, within the industry that are strong today and likely to continue in the future where there can be benefits to the farming community and where we may choose to invest in, in a new type of economic development that we've not been engaged in before. So I'll give you an example. And uh, uh, Chris Williams mentioned earlier one of the breweries coming to Summit Point. Um, craft breweries are, are becoming a really uh, vibrant part of many communities, including here in the Chesapeake. They're the kind of things that it's a tie that binds, makes you a great place to live, it's a great place to work, it's the kind of amenity uh, people want, but it needs natural resources. If you're going to be a local craft brewer, you need hops, and those hops have to be grown and processed within a certain um, distance of your facility. So having the region uh, globally, and, and of course the city of Chesapeake here locally become much more of a player in, in hops production and hops processing is an opportunity to grow our agricultural base on the farming side and on the manufacturing side and ultimately leading uh, to, to enhanced growth in, in, in a new market and a new industry in, in craft beer. So I think that's one of those, those uh, ties that binds everything together. And, and I mentioned the play opportunity. I, I know when a lot of people talk about communities, including Chesapeake, um, going to cool places and cool destinations like craft breweries, it's, it's really important. Our tourism uh, division here in the city of Chesapeake is embedded in our parks and recreation department because there's so many linkages between things people want to do here locally, things visitors want to do. And so we want to show you a video about what it means to play here in the city of Chesapeake. We're standing here on the Dismal Swamp Canal Trail along the historic Great Dismal Swamp. Exciting times to be in Chesapeake with so many playful things to do and places to see. Although our city is officially less than 60 years old, our history goes back centuries and Chesapeake is finding ways to bring many of our stories of our past to real life. The Dismal Swamp Canal Trail was recently repaved and remarked and the trail includes 8.2 miles of serene tree-lined corridor which provides a habitat for migratory birds and wildlife. By the mid-1800s, the canal was busy and an important place for commerce and transporting goods by boat. The historic Wallace House and what is now called the Superintendent's House both sit along the canal and the trail off of Glencoe Street. 
It is here where Chesapeake is in the process of relocating the Cornland School to form a historic village to help celebrate and interpret our past. Yes, history is alive and well in Chesapeake. In the last year, Chesapeake has also opened the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways History Museum located on the site of the first land battle of the American Revolution in Virginia. Oh, yeah. The museum is now open to the public and we are actively securing property adjacent to the battlefield park which will complete the area for future historical interpretation. Also, we are in the process of beginning the fundraising phases for phase two and three expansion of the museum which will include an auditorium and educational classrooms. But Chesapeake is not done there as there are other historical initiatives that we are on the move with such as the installation of an interpretive state historical marker celebrating the Owens Melvin House and we're also working with VDOT to secure a parcel that was once a Civil War Union fort in Western Branch off of Jolliffe Landing. Also we're restoring the historical artifacts of the old Jordan Bridge in South Norfolk to display at Elizabeth River Park. Along with these many historical initiatives, Chesapeake is also working on a number of new park developments for citizens, community groups, and visitors to play. We are looking to add to our many natural treasures we already have in our Chesapeake parks by providing better connectivity for communities and finding more opportunities for public access to our unique and intriguing waterways. Blue Heron Landing Park, located on the Indian River and off of Indian River Road, will be an eco-friendly park with sloped walkways to a boardwalk with scenic marshy overlooks and kayaking opportunities. Heritage Park along South Battlefield in Southern Chesapeake will offer equestrian and trails emphasizing our horse community. It will be compatible for horse shows, group outings, and natural adventures. And finally, the Newton Neck property located along Dominion Boulevard at the Veterans Bridge that once officially acquired will be master planned with the neighboring communities and potentially offer another opportunity for public access and to play along the Elizabeth River. And some of our other precious park gems in the city, such as Northwest River Park, is in the process of undergoing major renovation. The Ranger Station and Interpretive Center is just finishing up final design with the hope to be ready and open by April 2022. The restrooms at the South Terminal along the Northwest River and the campsite restrooms and showers are under construction as we speak. The Marjorie Ryan walkway located within the park is an overlook, is 500 feet long, eight feet wide boardwalk trail through natural wet areas, highlighted by an overlook at one of the most beautiful spots in the city. It's now completed and open to the public for the first time in 12 years. We have other recreational projects that have recently been completed to include the Western Branch Splash Park, located at the Western Branch Community Center, which is the city's first public water playground. The Western Branch Trail, located along Bruce Road and connected through Tire Neck Road, is now complete with benches, trash cans, and even a bike fix-it station. Our athletic fields throughout the city continue to be improved with the addition of LED energy efficient lights at eight fields in the past three years, including two fields in progress at our major soccer complex located in Centerville Park. Other facility renovations include generators going in at all eight community centers to help provide safe and secure facilities during storms and to keep play going during unexpected power outages. The city has recently also installed a new wooden maple gymnasium floor at the Clarence V. Cuffey Community Center and in the process of now redoing the gymnasium floor at the Rivercrest Community Center. We also are continuing to approve and upgrade many of our city school playgrounds, group shelters, and have approved accessibility and connectivity and walkways within our park system and to our neighborhoods. Wow, Chesapeake, there is so much to do in so many different ways to enjoy our amenities. This is just a snapshot of some of our unique and diverse parks and activities that make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. Oh, Mr. City Manager, please remind me to ask Mike Barber how many takes it took for him to actually hit that <laughs> ball.
you know, we, we are, that's actually my favorite part of the five, five uh, strategic anchors, but uh, play, I enjoy the play part. There's a couple of other things about play I'd like to mention before I ask you to conclude or to summarize uh, that and then we will we'll come to a conclusion. But first of all, the Newton Neck uh, Park, 90 acres, we did have an opportunity to walk that with uh, Delegate Barry Knight, and what a great opportunity that's going to be for us as a park, and having had the opportunity to work with the Living River Trust, the first time we've done anything with them, but, you know, we've, I think, conserved somewhere around 1,000 acres around Dismal Swap, so, Swamp, and so we've done a pretty good job with that uh, That. Uh, conservation aspect of, of, of our city. Uh, another aspect of play is, I, you know, I think thinking about all the athletes that Chesapeake has, has produced, professional athletes, I think the, the newest one that I want to mention right now is a, a graduate from Grassfield High School, Grant Holloway. He just set a new world record running 60 meters in 7.9 seconds. In fact, it took, it took me longer to say that than it did for him to run that. Uh, so we're really excited about uh, Grant and his success and look forward to him uh, just really doing well in this uh, next Olympics. So to you before we do closing, Mr. Manager. Well, again, I just uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here on behalf of our entire team. Uh, we, we do look forward to continuing to working with the community, in particular the business community in the chamber um, who, are, who are leading the way in, in many of these initiatives. And, and we look forward to continue making progress, reporting back on that, that progress, and, and continuing to make Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, learn, work, farm, and play. Thank you. Appreciate you being here today. You know, it's it's been 18 years since our former city manager, uh, uh, Dr. Clarence V. Cuffey, uh, coined that phrase uh, to become a mantra for, for Chesapeake when he said and proclaimed that Chesapeake is a city that cares. And in that time, we've seen both wisdom in and the impact of those four simple words. Uh, we are a city that's caring and it comes first and has expressed in so many different ways. And one of the um, great examples of that caring philosophy that I enjoy is, is uh, four kids. We're so excited to have their corporate office to land in, uh, in South Norfolk. Uh, had a recent tour of that building. It's coming along quite well. And I think in next year's state of the city, we'll be able to uh, even say more about what they're getting ready to do. But they are certainly a home of innovation, uh, important new programs, uh, and so we're just pleased to have them in the center of a city that cares. Uh, <clears throat> We have certainly learned uh, Chesapeake's caring side of, uh, during this past year as we work through this battle with the pandemic. We've also seen thousands of neighbors who've received their vaccine and helping move us, moving us closer to a much anticipated uh, return to normalcy. And we hope that everyone will take advantage of that vaccine opportunity when it comes. And as I said last year, at this stage, at the state of the city, when that time Time comes, don't throw away your shot. So Chris said, with a focus of vision and strong anchors, there's nothing that we as a city cannot achieve. Making Chesapeake an exceptional place to live, to learn, to work, to farm, and to play is a goal that I believe everyone can get behind, regardless of what your role in the city is. And I can tell you that my city council colleagues and the 4,000 employees are committed to just that, and I hope you will be too. So as in the beginning of the 2021 state of the city address has taken a bit of a different tone and direction. I hope that we've truly given you a state of our city at this time and place. I want to again thank the chamber uh, for, and the sponsors for hosting this event. Uh, it just really has been an amazing thing, especially with this pandemic, as I said earlier. I want to thank Donna and your staff for the conference center, all of you that are able to be here in, in live, and all of you that are out. Uh, looking at this virtually. I am confident that Chesapeake will rise up and overcome all the challenges that we talk to, move us uh, forward as a city that cares. I would expect no less. Once again, thank you for being here, and may God bless our city, our state, and our nation. Thank you.